uh, can you hear me, everyone? Now, we, you know, I heard uh, you guys clapping. I know it's 4 or whatever, 4.15. But let's give a big round of applause to all of us and to Sachin, who is our guest today. Uh, because we get to... Uh, I am very excited because uh, personally for me in the last eight years, one company which I think all of us should be very, very proud of, we can have various views, but very, very proud in India is Flipkart. And, and today we have the executive chairman, and we'll talk about to the executive chairman about the designation also. <laughs> but we have uh, him with us, and then we get to ask him some questions. So Sachin, uh, I don't have a book or anything, but uh, you have to say that everything that you will say will be true to you know the truth and only truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, the first question which I want Absolutely. to ask, and I'm sure every entrepreneur in this room would uh, love to ask you, is, uh, you know, in the last eight years, you built such a big organization. What are the three things that you did, you know, if you have to look back from, to, you know, today, what are the three things that you did right, and three things that you think worked very well for Flipkart? Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think one thing that definitely worked well for us is that uh, that we we worked uh, we were very clear with the people that we want to work with, and uh, there were clear uh, boundaries or constraints that we put on ourselves that uh, I, that that this is the kind of people that we want to work with. And and as a startup, it's very hard to take that call. Yeah. And if I look back, uh, uh, we were when we were a small company and. Uh, uh, of course, I mean, when you're a small company, especially in 2007 or 2008 time period, I mean, that time, uh, startups weren't that cool at yes. that time, right? So, and then what we, what we found is that uh, uh, we, we, could have, we could have lowered a bar of talent or we could have easily uh, said yes to a lot more people who were coming to us because of various reasons, uh, not necessarily the right ones a yeah. lot of times. And uh, we, but we, but we kept our uh, resolve during that period, and that really paid off. Um, again, we, we could have done better, uh, but I think what we did, uh, the, to the extent we were able to uh, do that, yeah. is something that has really worked well for us. I think that's the single largest uh, reason. Uh, and that's not true just for employees, actually. It's true also for, from an investor's point of view. And we were, and for, I think, probably because of some, uh, some, some, uh, some circumstances, we were in a situation where we were able to choose our investors from time and again. Again and again, we were able to decide who we should uh, yeah. want to partner with, and that really worked pretty well. Um, and I think a lot of times, uh, uh, and, and we were able to set the right expectations with our investors, and, and, we, and that, that I think, uh, that's like a single largest thing that is, is what I would say that is. Um, I think uh, I think apart from that we uh, we remained uh, and and I think that's kind of true for uh, anyone who has done some, anything significant in uh, in in the business uh, world uh, is uh, not just for startups but is that keeping your ears and eyes to the ground yes. and understanding what is really going on from on all the time is something that has really worked uh, well for us and making sure that we are always grounded we don't become arrogant and and don't starting think start thinking that we can we can move a lot of things just because we are great and just because a lot of people say that we are great uh, making sure that that doesn't go to our head uh, is something that we have done i never read positive pr about us ever um, and um, and i always read criticism so to uh, get your attention you have to write negative <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I think uh, I think that's something that is uh, very important. I think these are the these were the large uh, things that has really worked well for us. Okay, so 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 you're saying that uh, choosing the team, the right team from early on, choosing the investors, the right investors, uh, very focused and uh, uh, and humility yes. are things that have uh, uh, worked for you. You personally, as uh, you've been uh, at the helm building the company, what you think you did uh, as an individual, as a founder, what did you do right? You know, because we want to know. This is a mm -hmm. huge company you've built. You have to give us all the secrets. 
I think at, at some level it's doing the basics right, uh, and uh, and some of it is also. I mean, personally also. I mean, whatever I told you about is also very personal for yeah. right. So and something that I keep uh, telling uh, all founders who I meet and as well as founders who have invested in. Uh, I mean, if you are a founder of a company, everything personal is business and everything business is also very personal. Yeah. And there's no final, there's no lines between that. I think, I think whatever, uh, whatever you do in your personal life has a large impact on, on, uh, on, on business. And, and in fact, at some level, you never you you never switch off anyway, right? Yeah. So, so I think I think making and making sure that uh, um, I think what I have I would say one thing that I that I would say I've done personally well is that I've always um, stayed open to change and to learn and to keep that attitude alive, and yeah. that's very important. And it's very easy to lose that. Uh, it's very easy to think that you know enough or you know better than other people uh, and, and to, to start believing in the, your own PR, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's very easy to do that, but yes. it's, uh, it's... But the kind of PR you guys get, yes. And we don't, that's why I don't read the positive ones, because yeah, right? yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I think press has a, press and generally people uh, in general have, a, and even stock markets and investors sentiment is, uh, swings from very positive to very negative. And uh, when I see very positive um, comments or uh, stories about someone, things definitely are not as good as they are portrayed to be. And uh, when very negative things are also being, put, being said, things are definitely not as bad as well. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not, li life is not as black and white. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so it's important to keep working at your shortcomings, keep learning, keep uh, exploring, keep, keep your ears and eyes open. Uh, there is... Uh, tremendous amount of feedback that comes to you if you are able to do that, you are able to create that environment. And that's what I believe that we have uh, done, done that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, I also want to uh, share with everyone uh, is one of the things that we constantly talk to people working in Flipkart. And uh, the thing that they say about the founders is that you can't even make out that they are the founder. Like, you know, like one of, it's like one of us. And, and you guys have maintained that attitude till now. I think that's uh, uh, very, you're walking the talk. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's important. I think, uh, as I said, right. So when you start getting, when you start becoming unapproachable, you start coming across as someone who knows, who knows uh, yes. everything and uh, can't be questioned. And those things start happening. You you stop getting feedback. People stop talking, giving you feedback. That happens in real life as well. Yes. As much as it happens in a in a business, and uh, you then stop growing if if uh, feedback doesn't come to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sachin, I had uh, one. Uh, uh, more question is, uh, you know, as startups grow, as organizations grow, it becomes very difficult for founders, for people who've started the company to, uh, uh, you know, it's like, like detaching or not det detaching, but not being uh, micromanaging and being involved in everything. Uh, and, and, and in most startups we see, and in India, I think uh, it's one of the uh, key challenges that we hear about. But one thing Flipkart has done very well is that you've got extraordinary leaders in your company early on. You've built, you've grown. We know many people who've done extraordinary being in Flipkart. And you've scaled a big organization. How, how did you do that? Was it very consciously thought through uh, decision? Yeah, I think it's kind of related to what I just said about it. I think uh, we, Vinny and I were very clear from the start that we don't know much. I mean, about anything, actually. Uh, when we started off, we were just software engineers. We just knew how to write code. Uh, and that, too, on a certain, like, in, in, as part of AWS, we had learned how to write code in code, about, code for large-scale distributed systems. And that's basically what we knew. Uh, and Bini had done some work around vision and, uh, and uh, robotics and stuff, which is not very relevant again, <laughs> right? So we kind of uh, well, uh, had to learn almost 99% of whatever we know today to run uh, this business, you had to learn. And we were, we were actually pretty aware of that uh, yes. when we started. And, uh, and we knew that we need people to come and help us do that. And uh, so we, were, we gave a lot of autonomy from day one uh, to everyone who came in. Um, and uh, a lot of trust, a lot of autonomy. Um, and I'm very happy to say that I think that 
most of the cases, barring of very few exceptions, most of the cases people have really taken that trust and delivered, uh, given back to the company 10 times. Uh, and, and that's how we have been able to, uh, to grow. I think starting from very early on, uh, uh, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been that environment that we created that has nurtured people to be able to do. But it's a little bit of a, uh, it creates a little bit of, there's a little bit of bad side to this as well, right? Because if someone is not able to, uh, because it, with a lot of trust and freedom, you also get a lot of responsibility. Yes. Some people are not able to do that and then um, they, they don't scale uh, after some time. But, but uh, one, the ones who do, they really change the shape of the company. And every employee has joined uh, from early on, even now, has significantly shaped uh, the business because we've given them that freedom to go ahead and change things. So as founders, how involved or how non-involved? So what's like, what it is like every day? Yeah. Like how? No, I think uh, at the scale that we are in, uh, we are at right now, we can't, and especially, and even, even uh, very, uh, even early days also, right? Uh, we, we weren't, both Bini and I were very clear that our job largely in areas where we have great leaders, our job is largely to uh, define boundaries uh, and broad boundaries, not really sh very narrow boundaries, define broad boundaries and broad frameworks of decision making and also uh, give direction, right? So this is the direction in which we'll go and largely on how you get there is something, this is, this is a large broad boundary and that's what we, uh, that's the framework that we have followed. Um, and uh, and once we have deep trust on someone, we basically let them do uh, everything, and that has led to a lot of innovation. For example, uh, our our, our e-cart logistics, you know, it was started by a uh, by an intern uh, from from I am Bangalore, uh, and uh, basically that person came and said, Sachin, I want to try out um, um, maybe doing our own deliveries in a pin code in Kormangla where our office was, and he, we said, okay, let, go ahead and try. And he basically went ahead and hired like four or five Domino's pizza delivery guys and, uh, and started doing deliveries. And, and then came back after a couple of weeks with the data that customer satisfaction rate was, was crazy, yeah. crazily good in that, in that area. And, and we basically then scaled it up to 20 cities in three months wow. after that, right? So yeah. that's, the, that's how we have... Uh, that's how we have, we have a, uh, approached problem solving and given a lot of freedom. And did you always think large? Did you always think that it will be like from day one that we'll be very big? Um, I think I, I I think will we get this big this fast? Absolutely, that was not. I mean, we I had never imagined that this is something that will happen. Um, our I remember my, our early first uh, business plan that I presented to Axel partners and it was like in, uh, in maybe five to 10 years, we will be a hundred million dollar company and uh, your return on capital invested will be this much and all of those things. Right? So, <laughs> and yeah. uh, um, Subroto was here uh, some time back, but I think that was the initial business plan. Um, uh, we had no, actually, as we started executing more and more, what we realized is that we were sitting we were digging like, it's like we were digging out of some gold out of the ground. And as we started digging, we started, the mine is much bigger and bigger and bigger. And we said, okay, then we need to set up organization, infrastructure, uh, investments to mine this gold mine, which is, seems to be much and much bigger and bigger. So, and I think, uh, and that's the, that's how we have, uh, uh, and I think our, some of our partners, I mean, especially uh, uh, our investors played a big role in making us realize that. I'm pretty sure we were pretty raw when we started. They saw something that led them to, inv that, uh, to invest in us, and then they later showed us, I mean, why don't you look at it this way? I said, oh yeah, this makes sense. Uh, it's pretty big, uh, and we have to think differently about problem solving in this space. Uh, so that's how, it's, it was more of an evolution. I don't think it was like a, it's a continuum. It's not really a, like, okay, from day one we said, or in college or in school, I decided that I want to make a huge company. I think it's more like a exploratory process which uh, it revealed itself over time and that's how we have done. Uh, one thing which uh, both of you as uh, uh, founders 
from early on have talked about regularly and I remember very early going to your office and you guys had a hackathon like one of the first companies to do for internal employees hackathon is that you're building a very strong technology tech company from India. Uh, talk us ab about it. You know, you've yeah. termed as e-commerce, big data platform. What is it? What's it? Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think it's also, uh, this is also kind of uh, what we know. I mean, we are both engineers, uh, computer engineers, and that's what we know. And we are passionate about technology and, and uh, computer science. And apart from that, it's a need of the business. The business of this scale and this nature can't be run at, uh, uh, at without without automating almost every part of it, or at least having platform, and and uh, where 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 uh, where it's uh, where manual work or manual decision making is reduced as much as possible to the from the whole system. Otherwise, we just can't scale, uh, and and that's what we uh, uh, that's what we have realized actually uh, uh, at some point of time, and we said that we need to I I increase our investments and in, in technology, and and that's what we did, and now we are um, making some serious investments okay. from the tech side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, one question which uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, and this is as an entrepreneur. Uh, a question to an entrepreneur is, uh, does it get lonely at the top? Uh, you know, teams grow, uh, organizations grow, people come, people go, various stakeholders outside, inside, press, media, so much attention. Uh, does it get lonely? And uh, if it does, how do you deal with it? That's, uh, the short answer is yes. I think it does, right? So. And uh, and I've, a lot of founders here would relate to that uh, at certain point. I mean, I don't think anybody can relate to what a founder goes through or uh, yeah. through the ups and downs of, uh, of of the of the startup or the business. And and I and I think that's how it should be. Uh, that's how it works, because then it pushes you beyond your limits, beyond your comfort zone, and that's how you learn and that's how you grow. Uh, in our case, I think it was a little bit slightly more easier because it, we had, Vinny and I had each other and we could talk to each other about these things and, uh, and bounce off things. Uh, but, uh, but I think uh, it is, uh, and, and at some point of time, I think you have to, uh, you have to constantly uh, pull yourself out of like, small details and small problems that you're dealing with to think what is the big picture. Right? Where are where are we headed? Are we headed in the right direction? Okay. If we are not headed in the right direction, let's change that. Right? Rather than worry about or getting to bogged down into small details, whether some VC said no or some uh, uh, deal did not go through or some in, some employee uh, came and left or did not meet our expectations, whatever that happens. Right? And it's a constant journey. It, it's not happening for the first time. It will not happen. It's not happening yeah. for the last time. Uh, also, right? And it is uh, something that is a continuous uh, process. Uh, I think all, all you can do is you can take them as learnings, extract the learnings out of it and ignore the rest of the stuff uh, from those mistakes and take the learnings and learn and then move forward. Uh, that's, how, uh, that's how we have approached uh, this. And what helps you in ignoring those things? Like how do you stay anchored? As I said, right, I think the anchor is the bigger picture. Uh, yeah. What is the what is the goal? Uh, uh, we have an opportunity to transform commerce uh, the, for the whole country, um, where basic things are broken, and we can actually make commerce much much better overall, yeah. right? So, and that will be a huge uh, uh, as much as it will be a huge change in the way we live, and and we are very passionate about it because we have lived here, grown up here, we have seen how it is broken and yeah. how can how it is behind, it will be a huge change from that point of view, but also it's a great, um, great opportunity. And we are tapping into that. We are, we are going after a huge opportunity. Um, and, and that's, that's what is exciting. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, okay. So now we're going to do like a fireside chat with a difference and uh, we'll do a rapid fire. Okay. We mm -hmm. have picked up with the, this from this, uh, coffee with Karan show. So we'll have a rapid fire, and I'll ask you, I'll say one word, and you have to give me a sentence. Okay. Whatever comes topmost. Uh, uh, 
startup? Startup, I think, is transformation and energy. Okay. Failure. Failure is uh, learnings and no regrets. Okay. Um, <clears throat> funding. Funding is um, one of the means to the end. Media. <laughs> Ignore. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry, yeah, the, the media people are sitting in the front. I didn't realize that. <laughs> as long as you're not ignoring me. It's pretty me. hot here, yeah, so yeah, 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 I can't think properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's uh, talk more. Uh, naysayers. They keep you on your toes, and they're important. They play a very important role. Team? Team is your family. Investors. Uh, if you set the right expectations, investors can be, if you set the right expectations and you get the right investors, they can be like, they can be force multiplier. Mm. Happiness. Happiness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it is about uh, you reaching your, I mean, what's, what is the problem that you're trying to solve and what is the extent to which you have solved that problem? That is, that is happiness. Yeah. Flipkart. Uh, Flipkart is, is um, um, my life. Yeah, yeah, more like I, I, Treat it more like my child, so, but yeah, it's a yeah, big part of my life. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> do we have time or you're giving me, uh, okay, so one <laughs> thing, the organizers, uh, uh, great event, too, man, too, too many of us, and mm -hmm. it's a great event. How's your experience in Surge Conference? How are you, what are you liking about it? No, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a start, it's a good start, and I think, uh, uh, we should make, definitely make it bigger. Uh, Paddy's here. Uh, I think I've known Paddy for a long time. Uh, so I, uh, I remember I went to his first conference. They were, they were also a very small startup at that time. They were trying to put things together uh, in, in Ireland. And I really liked what they did over there. And I, I told him at that time, I mean, we would love to have something like that in India. I think it's a great start. And uh, definitely we should make it bigger next year. Yeah. OK. Thanks. Yeah. I think it's a great, uh, we should, we should uh, it should be a round of applause for the organizers here. Yeah.